Good Thursday evening, everybody, from the News Channel 3 home office backyard. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik from a beautiful day today and looking at a gorgeous sunset out there as you hear the garbage trucks cleaning things up in the distance. Looks like it's going to be a beautiful sunset for tonight and got a few fake stars overhead for this evening, but otherwise not doing too bad across the area. These clear skies should remain across much of the Mid-South for most of the evening, but we also have a few clouds, as you saw, drifting up from the south, and that's going to be, again, maybe be a bit of a problem for a bit of stargazing into the rest of the evening. So if you'd like to find out more about this, head to our website, wreg.com, and keep up to date with what's going on with our sky blog net, and you find out more details as to what's going on in Mid-South skies for tonight. Looking to the southwest, Orion should be heading its way upwards and into the evening hours. You'll be able to see it looks like the uh, very nice moon making its way toward the waxing gibbous heading toward full. You can see uh, Venus toward the southwestern skies. Mars is also up there, but Saturn is a little bit too close to the sun. It's going down right after sunset or so, but the evening hours looks like it'll be some decent viewing out there. Into the morning, again, Orion setting in the southwest and Jupiter rising in the east right before sunrise. So a beautiful view to take a look at out there if you want to do some early morning stargazing. Into the cosmic neighborhood, some close shaves in the next few days as a couple of meteors try to make their way on through. Those large objects making their way through parts of the solar system left over from the creation of the solar system. And that is going to be uh, making its way through but missing the Earth. The first couple of them into the next couple of days uh, heading into tomorrow. There's one that's about 81 meters big, but it's 11 times farther away than the Earth is from the moon. On the late evening hours, another one about 28 meters in diameter is about two and a half times away from the moon. And another one on the 12th, actually several of them are going to pass by on the 12th. One of them comes again within three lunar distances and another one within 2.6 or so. And some of those are some pretty big rocks out there flying through the solar system. If you'd like to see more about this, go to spaceweather.com and you can find out more about what's going on out across the Mid-South. Daily predictions, taking a look at heavens-above.com. And there's a couple of satellites to take a look at for the evening hours out across parts of the Mid-South. The first one going to be, again, a little bit on the brighter side. Uh, this one is going to be heading its way across the sky starting at about the 638, 639 period of time, and that's going to be, again, heading its way upwards through Draco the Dragon, very close to Ursa Major before finishing up in the square of Pegasus. This is a Lacrosse 5 rocket body that was left over from a launch several years ago, but it's still visible enough. This is going to be the brightest thing out there, so not exactly dazzlingly bright like the space station or the planet Venus, but you might see it out there. And remember that it's going to be just a bright point of light, semi-bright point of light, and making its way steadily across the sky. The new Chinese space station, Tiangong-2, will be rising not too far uh, from the uh, Lacrosse rocket body at about 829, uh, 629 into around 631, heading between the Big Dipper way on the northern horizon and between there and Ursa, Ma Ursa Minor the Little Dipper before it fades at about 632. So this is going to be a very quick pass before the new Chinese space station makes its way into uh, the early morning hours into uh, tomorrow morning. We'll be seeing more of another satellite, but this will be again right after sunset. It heads into the Earth's shadow and is not seen again right after that. Heading into tomorrow morning, we actually have a couple of things going on. The first one is the space plane that we've talked about before, the OTV-4, the X-37B from Boeing. That'll be making its way across the Mid-South uh, into and around the area of about 535 if you'd like to see that passing on through the Mid-South. And then another one that we haven't seen for a while and not going to be seeing for too much longer. This one is the original Chinese space station, Tiangong-1. That is going to be making its way into and around the area just over the Mid-South by about 530 or pardon me, 550 in the morning rising in the Southwest and making its way over to the Northeastern Horizon through the area close to Ursa Minor the tail of Draco the Dragon at about 554 and then fading into the sunrise at about 557. So if you'd like to get up and see the Chinese space station, it's been abandoned. It's assumed to be uh, lost and is going to be brought down within the course of the next couple of years. It's not a hazard to anybody on the ground. It'll be a controlled descent, hopefully, and remember that 70% of the 
Earth's surface is water, so we do not have anything to worry about when it comes to this thing crashing onto our heads, or at least a very minimal chance anyway. Iridium satellite flares. We do have at least one to tell you about for this evening. If you're going to be out and about, this is what you're going to be looking for, and several others over the next several days, including in the morning and in the evening. So something you can check out there if you want to see this. It's the Iridium Communication Satellite Network. It's been abandoned. It does not have any purpose anymore but its solar panels will reflect light very easily and at the right time you will see this what you're going to be looking for is north is at the bottom is at the uh, top of the screen so this will be going down toward the horizon and you need to look upwards toward the W of Cassiopeia between there and the other constellation going between there and Cepheus that again will be happening at just about uh, 5 38 for this evening. If you'd like to see that, uh, it'll fade into view, it'll become very bright for a second, and then it'll fade away. That's what these things do. That's why they're called a flare. They're not steady like across the entire sky. The satellites tumble, and you see the shot the shot of light very quickly and that's about all that you see out of this so again you'll have to be looking in the right position looking to the north uh, about halfway up toward the zenith of the sky and you should be able to see this uh, as it goes on through. So good opportunity to see this coming up a little bit later on. The supermoon is coming up into the course of the next couple of days. This view from Earth sky. What do you need to know before the supermoon happens? And how big actually is this? It's the biggest moon we've seen since 1948. It's going to be that much closer to the Earth than several of the other supermoons that you've heard about. Plus, is this all hokum? Is it too much hype? Is it too much to talk about in the way of science? Well, it's nice to tell people people about it, but again, they take a look at if this is too much information, if we're making too much of a big deal about these supermoons, but you got to admit, it is pretty much on the cool side to be able to see something like this and to know that you're looking at something that's a little bit bigger, and that's partly why the moon looks that big out on the horizon, so something to consider there. Again, if you'd like to know more about what's going on, we have plenty of links available, wreg.com slash weather, and a lot more information coming up as we go into the weekend to help you keep looking up where it comes to satellites and and planets and stars, and don't forget the meteor shower from the Torrids is going to be peaking pretty soon from the constellation of Taurus the Bull, and we'll be looking for, again, the possibility of a few stray meteors out there. Keep your eyes open for fireballs, because into the next several days and weeks as we get toward the end of the year, there will be those meteor showers to where the big ones really start to happen, where you'll see a giant streak of light across the sky very quickly. Uh, hopefully nothing big coming our way, but again, it is going to be possible with some of that stuff out there, so something to think about as you head on through the next couple of days doing some stargazing, maybe thinking about getting your family, your kids, a telescope for the holidays, something to think about to get them more interested in astronomy and plenty of groups and things of that nature all around the Mid-South area and plenty of that on my social media pages as well. That'll wrap it up for this edition of News Channel 3's astronomy blog, Skyblog 3, helping you to find out what's flying over the Mid-South and what's up in the skies tonight and the morning of and to tomorrow. We'll have more coming up. If you have any questions or suggestions, please let me know at austin.onic at wreg.com. Live from the House Onic backyard, I'm meteorologist Austin Onic. Thanks for joining me for the latest edition of News Channel 3 Skyblog 3. And remember when it comes to science or astronomy, keep looking up.